In a gated island community in Montreal, a biotech company is hired to take care of the fields of an exclusive golf club. They spray the area with their latest fertilizer, which melts the snow and keeps the grass nicely fresh and green during winter so rich people can play golf all year. The next day in town, security guard Dan brings a bunch of supplies to his home. He's an obsessed survivalist who is always practicing for the worst and is brainwashed by a radio show that stands for every conspiracy under the sun. Tonight Dan is practicing how to make a fire with no matches to no avail, so he grabs a shotgun shell to use its powder, which causes a small explosion that burns one of his eyebrows. In the golf club, Dan's daughter Patricia works as a caddy while Michelle, the CEO of the biotech company, plays golf with a rich couple to show them how great the grass is doing thanks to their treatment. However underneath the soil, the fertilizer particles are multiplying and contaminating the town's water. At a studio, an actor called Jacques has a glass of tap water before leaving to do some groceries. At the store, all the fruit and tools are washed with tap water as well, and on the shelves water is sprinkled to keep perishables fresh. Suddenly Jacques starts feeling a bit dizzy but ignores it for now. When he arrives home, he notices that his teeth are turning green and his stomach is growling. By the time he finds his wife in the bathroom, he's a full zombie and bites the poor woman, eating her flesh and making her transform as well. Jacques joins her in the tub as their eyes turn green and they grind to a halt. Back in the club, Michelle and the couple return to the main building and are surprised to see nobody around. Suddenly a man runs out as he yells they must run because people are sick, and soon a bunch of zombie employees come out to chase after him. At that moment a dog also appears and the wife calls it over, but the animal furiously jumps on her and bites her neck. Michelle and the husband immediately toss the dog away, only to see more zombies showing up. While the woman freezes as her body transforms, both men rush inside the building and lock the door to keep the zombies out. However the dog manages to sneak in and bites the husband in the leg, so they lock it up in another room. The zombies gather at the door and start pounding before the husband also transforms and starts chasing after Michelle, who rushes to hide in the kitchen after grabbing a knife. In town, Dan gets a call from an old lady who says her neighbors are being extra noisy and fighting a lot. Dan goes over there and when he rings the bell, the neighbors appear against the door, revealing their zombies. At the same time, the old lady turns into a zombie too and starts chasing after Dan, who immediately hides in his car and tries calling for backup, but nobody answers him. As more zombies appear outside his window, Dan also tries calling Patricia, but she doesn't answer either because she's busy trying to escape from the zombies. Getting worried, Dan decides to ditch the company car and get his car with a weapon to go looking for his daughter. Nearby, teenage boy Andre almost uses tap water to make his sister Annie's milk, but his mom reminds him to use bottled water to keep the baby safe. Andre never drinks water of any kind, preferring to stick to soda. Soon the mother starts feeling dizzy, but Andre blames it on all her exercising. Moments later, the mother turns into a zombie and tries to attack Andre, chasing him through the house. Terrified, the kid runs outside and trips, but when the mother is about to reach him, Dan hits her with his car. She's injured but still alive and Andre wants to help her, but Dan stops him. He explains that 911 isn't picking up and tells Andre to hide in his house, then he leaves. More zombies are coming and Andre refuses to leave his mother, so he grabs her by the legs and drags her back into the house. After rushing to close all the doors, he tries calling 911, only to get a record message saying that the island is under quarantine. At the bridge that connects the island with the mainland, it's revealed that cops from the city have put up a gate and nobody can go in or out. At that moment the mother tries to attack Annie, so Andre drags her away and locks her up in the bathroom. The mother notices that the shower head is dropping some water and decides to get inside the tub. Meanwhile Annie keeps crying, causing the zombies to keep gathering outside the door. Andre decides to cover her with pillows, a blanket, and even a big plushie until the crying can't be heard anymore, and the zombies leave. Minutes later, Andre's cat returns to the house through the pet door and suddenly a zombie reaches inside, almost grabbing Andre. The boy leaves the room and the zombie stops moving, only to move again when Andre comes back with a golf club. He doesn't attack though, preferring to hide instead. At the golf club, Patricia hides in the garage and finally calls her dad for help. Soon Dan arrives and finds a bunch of zombies outside but he doesn't hesitate to fight them, quickly killing a few with a knife and knocking down others before rushing inside. At that moment, the police move away from the bridge gate because the military arrives in planes to bomb the main areas of the island, which cuts off the power. The next morning, Annie's nanny tries to take the bridge to go to work, but it's been destroyed too. Meanwhile Andre records the zombies through the window, only stopping to watch a press conference of the Minister of Public Security. 
The man explains they had to destroy the bridge to isolate the problem and swears the situation is under control. At that moment, Andre's phone runs out of battery. Afterward Andre checks on his mom and notices she's covered in some green goo. Suddenly Annie crawls in and the mom tries to attack her, so Andre makes noise and shakes her favorite vegetables to make her follow him instead. Eventually they reach the living room and the mom accidentally bumps against the TV stand, causing the television to fall and kill her. Devastated, Andre has no choice but to take the body back to the bathroom and notices grass growing on her injuries. He then grabs her phone, but sadly it's broken. Then Andre takes a ladder to the front door to look outside and confirms the zombies are just standing there under the sun. Tired of the confinement, he grabs the golf club and puts Annie in a baby carrier before opening the door, letting the zombies see the cat and chase after it. With the entrance cleared, Andre runs as fast as he can toward the grocery store while the zombies chase him. The doors are locked and he almost gets surrounded by the monsters, but suddenly a door opens and Dan drags him inside. Dan has been here since yesterday and has made a little camping space, but he doesn't have a plan. All boats have been taken away and swimming in the river will kill them with hypothermia. Andre goes looking for baby formula while Annie looks around and she suddenly discovers a zombie behind locked doors. It's Patricia, who has been infected as well. Dan is keeping her around because he hopes someone may cure her later. At the golf club, Michelle has fortified all the doors and is using a radio to talk to his people at the company, who inform him experts are on their way and he must follow protocol too. The zombie dog keeps barking at him, so he kicks it away. It's also revealed that he's killed his friend in the kitchen. Back at the store, Dan still fails to start a fire, so Andre just uses a blowtorch. While they eat something, they listen to Dan's favorite radio show, which blames the zombie attack on eco-terrorists. The host gets to interview the Minister of Security, but the man is the typical politician who dodges questions or answers with vague words that say nothing. Suspicious, the host thinks the government will sacrifice the citizens to clean the area. Dan decides to call the radio station and explain that there are survivors, asking for help. However the host points out the rest of the world doesn't want the infection so he wants to know what's going on before taking anyone's side. Frustrated, Dan hangs up. Afterward Dan and Andre discuss their options and agree they should find the cause behind this so a vaccine can be created. Dan thinks about it and comes to the conclusion it must be in the water because it's the only thing every single person has in common, and he doesn't drink it from the tap because of his paranoia. He even thinks terrorists may have poisoned the water, which Andre finds ridiculous. Moments later, the trio leaves the store with Patricia, whose head has been put into a cage to avoid biting. They find a bunch of zombies covered in green goo and enjoying the sun, and a little girl attacks Dan as soon as she sees him. He quickly pushes her off, but he doesn't have the heart to kill her and keeps going. The group manages to get into Dan's car before the zombies catch up and safely leave the area. Meanwhile a pair of armed twins sent by the biotech company arrive at the golf club and shoot down every zombie that tries to get in their way without breaking a sweat. Inside, Michelle is burning all the contracts and documents related to his deal with the club, but he keeps a small sample of the fertilizer. The twins soon find him and Michelle takes one of their suitcases, which contains spheres with the cure that will kill the infection within 24 hours. When he grabs a sphere, the twins capture him and force him to eat the fertilizer sample before knocking him out. As they drag his body away, the sphere drops to the floor. Back to the survivors, they arrive at the water plant and decide to leave Annie in the car or her crying will attract zombies. They can't leave Patricia with the baby, so Dan and Andre bring her along when they enter the building, where a grassy zombie is hiding in the water. Patricia senses this and begins running to find him, so the guys have no choice but to follow her. She quickly finds the pool and jumps into it, causing Dan to jump as well to rescue her. Suddenly the other zombie resurfaces and almost attacks, but when Dan finds Patricia, he holds her in front of him and the other zombie pulls back. Andre comes closer and realizes the zombies won't attack each other, but the monster hears him and immediately starts chasing him. While Andre goes outside and more zombies join the chase, Dan tries to get Patricia out of the water and accidentally tears off her arm. Eventually Andre reaches the car to hide inside and soon Dan comes out too, using Patricia as a shield to keep the zombies at bay. They join the siblings in the car and Andre hears a noise that makes him realize Patricia also has a phone. He takes it and uses her severed arm to unlock it, which makes him notice the grass growing on the wound. Dan thinks grass in winter is weird until he remembers the golf club's latest innovation, realizing this isn't the work of terrorists but of golfers. At the golf club, the twins begin breaking the spheres on the grass to get rid of all the evidence. Soon Dan's group arrives and they notice the strange smoke on the grass, so Andre makes sure to record everything. They rush to the front door and find it locked, so Dan looks for another entrance. 
he climbs to the roof and gets inside to open the door for the others, then locks Patricia in the storage room while Andre uses chairs to form a playpen for Annie. Dan and Andre begin investigating the building and find the dog, which is still breathing and covered in grass. At that moment Dan starts feeling dizzy and Annie begins crying, so Andre rushes to her calm her down. However he discovers she's escaped the improvised playpen. While Andre looks for his sister, Dan goes down a dark corridor and discovers a bunch of bombs that will blow up the building soon. He also begins feeling worse, but he refuses to give up and keeps going until he finds the room with a timer that connects to all the explosives. Dan falls and is too weak to stand up, so he uses Patricia's arm to stop the timer right before his eyes turn green too. Outside, the twins notice nothing is exploding and go back inside to investigate. They find Annie in the kitchen and feed her the fertilizer before leaving. Andre keeps looking around and sees a zombified Michelle in a locked room, so he runs in the opposite way and finally finds his sister, so he takes her away. In another room, he finds his way blocked by the twins, who cover Annie's mouth and grab Andre to feed him the fertilizer. However before the sample drops, Annie becomes a zombie too and bites the twin's finger off. The other twin is almost attacked by Dan and when she fends him off, Andre pushes her toward him and Dan bites her. When Andre moves back, he steps on the cure sphere, causing the smoke to spread through the room and start working inside Danny and Dan. Afterward Dan chases after Andre and they make it to the kitchen, but when Dan is about to bite him, he senses Annie's presence and pulls back. At the same time, the twins take out their guns and shoot each other simultaneously before one can finish transforming. Next, Andre takes Dan's old school phone from his jacket and uses it to make Patricia's phone ring. When he finds it, he makes a video explaining everything, begging for help. While the video reaches the news, Andre takes Dan to the storage room so he can stay with his daughter. Soon the government sends army helicopters to do some deep cleaning. A group of soldiers uses flamethrowers to burn down any zombie in their path and Andre goes out to ask for help bringing Patricia's arm to be used for vaccines. However, another survivor reaches the soldiers first only to be shot down. As the cure kicks in and Annie gets better, Andre decides to hide since obviously the soldiers aren't here to save anyone. At the golf club, Dan also recovers, but when the soldiers open the door they immediately burn him and Patricia down. The Minister of Public Security announces that the infection has already been contained and eliminated, but he's seen drinking from a mug with the logo of the biotech company implying he was part of the conspiracy all along. Andre keeps wandering around, finding more bodies of survivors that were shot down. Suddenly he notices something in the river, it's a boat of volunteers led by Annie's nanny, who rescue him without hesitation. As they leave the island, Andre realizes the arm is useless now and throws it in the water, where a fish takes a bite and quickly becomes a zombie. 